Good morning, Mount Olive Church. I want to give you our Monday morning devotion, and our thoughts go to the message that God brought through Brother Jason of uncompromise. And the biblical story was in Daniel, uh, when Daniel and the other three Hebrew children were taken into the city of Babylon, and how that Babylon tried to get them to compromise who they were, were and whose they were. Who, and so we don't want to compromise who we are and whose we are, right? And so one point in that was that compromise, a tool that's used to get us to compromise is isolation. And he talked about how that those three Hebrew boys and Daniel were taken away from their family, their community, and their city, and their tradition, their heritage, their church, community, and brought into the city of Babylon to, to, to be disconnected, right, from those things. And isolation then is a tool of compromise. And so I thought about that, and he gave a scripture on that point, and I want to really think about that and maybe bring it out in this devotion. He said, one thing to help us in compromise is Psalms 119 and 89. It says this. This is our devotion scripture. Forever. Now, what's that mean, right? We know what that means. Unchanging ever and ever and ever. Never, It will never stop, right? Forever, O Lord, thy word, and the, the translation for word here is speech, your speaking, right, your utterance, your acts, forever, Psalms 119, 89, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled, it stands up on its own, it's firmly fixed, it uh, is upright. It is established, established forever. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So one way to um, alleviate the tool of isolation is through God's word, his speech, his utterance. So I want to talk about uh, this book that I've been reading uh, for my, my own personal reading time, and it's The Hiding Place by Corey Ted Boone. And we know that Corey Tim Boom was uh, in the family of, of a Dutch uh, wa uh, watchmaker, and they helped they helped many Jews to hide from uh, Nazi Germany, and they got caught, right? And so she spent many many months in prison camps, and was finally taken to Re Ravensbrück in Germany. And so you think about that. She was isolated from all of her family in a, in a matter of a moment. She was isolated from all of her family. And so I began to think, you know, what was it that helped her get through it all? When those last months in Ravensbrück in Germany, a concentration camp, she was reunited with her sister. See, that's fellowship. That's community. Uh, that's family. And together, they would help each other make it through. And the other thing that they had was the Word of God. She would hide uh, little New Testaments and little Bibles. And she would hide those and sneak them into the barracks to the point that at Ravensbrook, they were actually having worship services and reading the Word of God. And so to help her in isolation, she was reunited with her sister, Fellowship, and she repeatedly leaned on the word of God. And I like this quote, page 207. Sometimes I would slip the Bible from its little sack with hands that shook. So mysterious had it become to me. It was new. It had, it was like it had just been written. I marveled sometimes that the ink was dry. I had believed the Bible always, but reading it now, had nothing to do with belief. It was simply a description of the way things were, of hell and heaven, of how men act and how God acts. I had read a thousand times the story of Jesus' arrest, how soldiers had slapped him, laughed at him, flogged him. Now such happenings had faces and voices. She expresses the importance of the word of God in those barracks, in those concentration camps. Why is that important? because it lets us know that God is near. It's his speech. It's his utterance. 
it is a way that we fellowship with God and we realize we're not alone. He speaks to us. We hear him. We fellowship with him through his word. We need his word today. We need his word to become real. And so uncompromised to fight against the, the, the feel of isolation is to be united in the fellowship of your church family. Don't disconnect yourself from your church family. And secondly, stay united with the voice and the speech of God through his precious word, a powerful voice that would help a little lady through those times uh, in those concentration camps. Men of church, value the word of God and value the family of God. Have a great Monday.